That's it. Let's do that in this place right now. Just begin to pour yourself out to the Lord. Just begin to pour out in your spirit. That's okay. Oh, my Jesus, I give it all to you. Every word of worship, everything within my heart, everything within my mind, everything that I am, Lord Jesus, I give it out. And I'll continue to give it out. Every day, Jesus. Every day, Jesus, I give it to you, Lord God. Oh, you deserve it anyhow. It's all yours to begin it. I'm just returning it back to you, Lord. I give it to you, Jesus, willingly. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's exactly what Brother Godwin was talking about. Having a move of God so we can have a word of God so we can see the creation take place. And I'm believing it for tonight. So I appreciate your getting in tune and your sensitivity to God. And I'm going to ask that you would turn in your Bibles with me at this time. We're going to see what the Lord has for us and how he can begin to direct us accordingly. I'm going to be turning to 2 Kings chapter 13. 2 Kings chapter 13, and we'll be beginning at verse uh, 14 and reading up until verse uh, 20. It says, Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. Eventually he was going to die of the sickness. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him the bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou have consumed them. And verse 18, and he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Then hast thou consumed Syria till thou hadst consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt might smite Syria but thrice, only three times. And Elisha died, and they buried him, and the bands of Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. Tonight I'd like to talk to you on this subject, the power of continuance. The power of continuance. Lord Jesus, we ask that you continue to move upon our hearts as you have across this place this evening. We ask that we be open to you and that we would have revelation and understanding and that it would pour out into our lives, that we would be able to see as you would have us to see, that our ears would be open and, and that we might be able to hear, that in our knowledge and understanding we might be able to come into a greater understanding of our need, of our identity, and of our direction with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As a recap of this story, Elisha the prophet was upon his deathbed. And Joash, this king had, of Israel, had come before the man of God to receive a blessing because Joash knew that the kingdom of Israel and the future kings of Israel would need God's help if there was 
going to be any order of them uh, defending themselves. Elisha had Joash prepare his bow, and then with his own hands upon Joash's hands, one upon the other, they pulled the bow back and the arrow, and it went eastward out from, uh, from the window. And the arrow represented the deliverance that was soon on coming for uh, Israel and for that kingdom. And once he had spoken these things, he said, all right, now grab those arrows, the remaining of what you've got, and I want you to take them. And I want you to begin to hit them upon the ground. So Joash, he's been following this process. The man of God tells him to do this, and the man of God asks him to do that, and, and then he puts his hands upon him, and it's this kind of this process, this ordeal of, of one thing to the next, and he's, he's like, man, where, where's just the prayer, and, and I get the blessing, and we go. And he grabs the, the arrows, and he goes, one, two, three, okay. And he looks at, I can imagine in my mind's eye, looking at Elisha, and Elisha, sunken down, old and, and decrepit, he's on the verge of death, and I can just imagine both the anger and the sorrow that must have come over him and saying, what? Only three times? That's it? Only, only three times? Why not five? Why not six? Why not more? Just three? He was confused. He, he wondered why. He, he questioned it. He, he asked about it. And, and, and Joash was told then at that moment, you're only going to defeat Syria three more times in battle. But you could have consumed them. You could have taken them over completely. I had something so much more in mind for you, but you just did it three times. One, two, three. You see, Joash's lack of continuing and fervor brought dismal results for himself and Israel. Yes, they conquered Syria after three major battles to recover the cities that were taken. And it mentions that at the end of that chapter, that uh, three different uh, battles took place. They conquered. They got back those lands that had been taken from them. But God had so much more in mind. God had so much more in mind that they could have obtained. You see... There is a power in continuing. There is a power in continuance. And this unfortunate scenario happens all too often. In the process of seeking direction for our lives, we can become complacent instead of continuing, just as Joash did. Sometimes it's because the contentment that we feel or uh, uh, that we fail to continue. In our pursuit of achievement, we can allow our desire to subside and slowly settle for the second best option instead of continuing. And perhaps you've seen this in your own life. I know I have with my own. You climb life's proverbial mountain only to reach a plateau and you, you get there and you're like, wow, this is nice. Wow, look at the viewpoint from here. This looks good. This feels good. Wow. And God's like, wait a second. Do you realize the, the rest of the mountain's right behind you? Like, there's a peak right there where I got something more for you. There's something I want you to conquer, but this isn't it. This is just one measure of it. But I got so much more I want to show you. I've got so much more I want to give you. But are you willing to continue? Are you willing to go forward? Are you willing to keep on keeping on? I don't want to be complacent, and I don't want to be content. I want to have what God wants me to have. I want to take advantage of what His will offers. I want to go forth for it. There is a power in continuing, and I want it. We climb that mountain. We see that mountain, that vantage point. And if we continue just a little bit further and gave just a little bit more effort, then we could find ourselves having conquered the peak. There is power in continuing. This kind of complacency and contentment can overflow into many areas of our lives, as I mentioned. It can go into our relationships. 
considering it okay for things to go stale and maybe even become a little mechanical instead of pursuing continual growth and development for the relationship. Spiritual, you know, uh, friendships, marital, whatever the case might be. Our finances, considering it okay for details to slip by instead of continuing the budget, continuing the financial plan, continuing the process. Money comes in, tithe goes out, bills get paid, rest, thank you Jesus. But we break the process and it hurts us. Our health, sometimes we tell ourselves lies like, my body will fi be fine if I stop working out and eating right. However, the reason we've stayed healthy in the first place is because we continued. We continued eating right. We continued working out. That's what kept us in the, in the position we were in the first place. And maybe you're like, you know what? The reason that I continue to have this body whether, <laughs> is because I have continued to eat the way I have, and I have continued to not work out. Well, maybe you can continue something new. And that's the thing, is getting into the continuance of what God wants, not just the continuance of what we want. Because there is a power in continuing in the manner and in the way that God wants us to continue in. We see it in education. How little would we learn if we gave up when it just became a little difficult? How little would we learn if we stopped when we just, oh, I'm not interested in that subject. But there's a power that's in continuance. There's a power when we just continue on. Now, personally, I, I don't want to make the same mistake as Joash. I'm going to continue beating my arrows against the ground until I get my victory. I'm going to continue praying until I get my answer. I'm going to continue believing until I get my blessing. I'm going to continue inviting until they come to church. I'm going to continue praising until I get my victory. I'm going to continue pressing until I reach the mark. I'm going to continue fighting until I win that battle. I'm going to keep on keeping on because there's a power in continuing. It's a principle of God, and it works. I wish I knew all the details of it, but I know it works. What if Joshua and the children of Israel didn't continue the required number of times around the walls of Jericho? I can just hear it in my, 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 my thought process. I can just see it. Come on, Joshua. Will it really matter or make a difference if it's just six times today? I know he said seven, but do we really have to continue that one more lap? Do we really have to go the extra mile? Do we have to take that next step? You mean even after this, we have to shout? And then you mean after this, we got to run into the city and take it? Oh, man. Sounds like work. You betcha. You better believe it. It is work. But there's a power that comes from continuing, from keeping on and doing what the will of God says. Yes, I'm going to go around once. Yes, I'm going to go around twice. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yes! And the walls will come down. And I will take the ground. And it will happen. And I will go to the next city. And I'll conquer it. And I will go to the next land, and I'll conquer it, and I'll go to the next village, and it's mine, and the next river, and across it, and it's mine. I'm going to continue until I have it all. That promised land is mine, and I'm going to continue in it until I've gotten every little piece. What if Joshua hadn't continued? What if Jacob gave up wrestling the angel of the Lord. I can just hear it, just again. Come on, Jacob. You can just let go. You don't have to continue holding on. It's been all night. You can let up a little. Not for Jacob. Not for Jacob, not in his spirit. Not for him.
He was going to continue until he got a new name and a blessing from God. God, I'm going to keep holding on until I got, get what I came for. I'm going to keep praying until I see it happen or you give me an answer otherwise. I'm going to keep on keeping on because I know there is a power in continuing. I know that it works. And maybe you've wanted to give up. Maybe you've wanted to throw in the, the towel as it were. And that is just what the devil would want. That is exactly what he would like for you to think and for you to do. But I encourage you, you keep praying because that family member or friend is going to come back to church. You keep smiling. That storm of life, well, it's going to pass. You keep teaching. That friend that you've been teaching, that Bible study that you have, they're going to get understanding and they're going to get saved. You keep loving. It's making a difference in that person's life. You keep hoping. God is not going to let you be ashamed. You keep working. God is going to provide. You keep witnessing. Eventually, they're going to come to church. You just keep on keeping on because there's a power in continuing there's a reason that we see so many words ending with that eth that continuing factor that ing meaning that it just keeps on going overcometh worketh prayeth asketh receiveth seeketh knocketh endureth continueth it just keeps on keeping on because that's the nature of our god you can read the Psalms. It says, and his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And his mercy endureth forever. Did it stop? No, his mercy endureth forever. What happened? His mercy endureth forever. My God doesn't stop, and neither am I. If he can keep on going, and he'll keep providing, then I'll keep believing. If he'll keep protecting, I'll keep praying. If he's going to give it, I'm going to take it. If that's the offer, I'm going to go with it. Amen. I'm going to keep on keeping on. Now, what about the first century church? Revival had taken place amongst the Jews on the day of Pentecost. The upper room had been filled with the Shekinah glory of God, which made its presence known like a mighty rushing wind. Cloven tongues sitting upon the heads of those in attendance within the upper room. And then as they prayed... The gift of the Holy Ghost began to be poured out and men and women began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. That is powerful. These born-again souls were the product of an arduous seven to ten day prayer meeting. The sound of their prayers carried over the rooftops and those around wondered at what was happening. Many questioned, some ridiculed, but one stood up. Peter stood up and under the anointing of God, he preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. The results were astounding. At the end of that day, 3,120 people got saved. What a revival. What a master peace what a wonderful work and we could listen to all of that we could listen to all of that and say that was wonderful let's go to Applebee's it's done the story is ended boom done good two chapter book I love it end it right after verse 41 just boom that was that was great but that's not the case it would seem like a great finale, a great prayer meeting, a powerful church service, life-changing preaching, many souls saved. Wow. Just straight up, wow. Like, who wouldn't have wanted to be a part of that service, right? It sounds amazing. But the story is not over. This was only the beginning. After the prayer meeting was finished, the preaching had finished, the powerful move of God had finished, there was yet more to come because God understands the power of continuing. You see, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, it says this, they continued steadfastly. That doesn't mean they gave up, but they continued every single day in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. 
What did they continue in? They continued in the doctrine. They kept it up in the word. They kept up teaching. They kept on preaching. What did they do? They kept on in the fellowship and breaking of bread. The church stay u- stayed unified. The church kept fellowshipping. What did they keep on keeping on with? They kept on keeping on with prayers. Prayer continued on. You want a church that has revival? You want a church that has growth? Let's keep the word. Let's keep teaching. Let's keep preaching. Let's stay unified. Let's stay in fellowships. Let's keep praying. It worked for them. It's going to work for us. There is a power in continuing. That wasn't even the, the end of it. Just a few verses down from that, Acts chapter 2, 46 through 47. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. The church attendance didn't stop. They just kept on coming, kept on going, and breaking from bread from house to house. Home Bible studies and fellowship. Oh, you want to come and worship here? Sure, let's pray and worship here. Oh, let's do it over here. You want to, oh, yes, let's have it here. Oh, at your house tonight? Let's praise Jesus. They just kept on keeping on. That's what it was about. They did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. That singleness of heart right there, they stayed unified. They had a focused spirit. They didn't have a bunch of things distracting them. They kept the main thing the main thing because the main thing needs to be the main thing. I don't want to focus on anything else. I want to keep on keeping on. And so they did. It says they kept on praising God. There was praise. There was worship. They had favor with all the people. When they talked with them, there was outreach. There was ministry that took place. They were connecting with people, and it was having an effect. Why? Because there's a power in continuing. And at the very end of that verse, Acts chapter 2 and verse 47, it says this, And the Lord, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. There's God's part, and there's my part. And i got to ask myself, am I willing to keep on keeping on? What they experienced in the revival of Pentecost became the manner in which they continued. What they experienced in the revival of Pentecost became the manner in which they continued. There was prayer at the outset of Pentecost. There was praise and worship in that place. There was singing and there was shouting. There was preaching and there was revival. And in that same manner, they're like, okay, that worked here. Let's keep on taking this wherever we're going. All right? If it worked there in that upper room, let's see if it works outside the gate. Beautiful. All right? It worked there. Let's take it to Samaria. It worked in Samaria. Let's take it to Ephesus. Oh, it worked in Ephesus. All right. Let's go to Corinth. What about Thessalonica? What about Oakdale? What about St. Paul? What about Maplewood? What about... Name your city. It works because there is a power in continuing what the apostles did. It worked for them. It will work for us. There is power in it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They kept on keeping on. They didn't give up. They didn't let up. They didn't quiet up. When it came to Jesus, they kept on kept in, keeping on. Instead, they prayed more expectantly. They fasted more frequently. They witnessed more readily. They fellowshiped more regularly. They praised more ardently. They learned more willingly. They taught and they preached more heartily. When the church continued, the Lord added, why? Because there's a power in continuing. It doesn't just say that he added. You read a few chapters down, you know what it says? It says he multiplied. What does it say even after that? Innumerable. It just kept on keeping on because the church kept on keeping on. Maybe God's just waiting to see what you're going to do. What you're going to do today. Oh, you're going to move that direction? Oh, you're, you're, you're following me. I'm loving it. Keep on. That's it. That's Speak to him. Minister to him. Talk to him. All right, good. Now go and you do this. Okay, do this. All right, I'm going to bring you over here. You, you're following? You're continuing? Good job, good job. Pray for them. Minister to them. Talk to them. Teach them. Good job. I'm going to add. I'm going to multiply because you kept on keeping on. 
I believe in the apostolic effect. I believe in this model. I believe that what they started needs to continue on in this church today. Now, just a few chapters after Acts chapter 2, after the mention of their continuing, the apostles began to experience imprisonment, beatings, punishment on behalf of Christ. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'd be lying if I did. Just a few chapters later, and they're experiencing some hardship. Their persecutors told them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. And the apostles left that day saying, Oh, thank you, Lord, because I got to suffer for you. I got to keep on keeping on, even regardless of what anybody else said or what anybody else did to me. I'm thankful, Lord, that you considered me yours. I'm thankful that you considered me able to be able to fulfill your work. I thank you that you entrusted this into me and that you believe that I could handle it. They left rejoicing because of the sacrifice they could make for Jesus. What did they do right after that? Did they bury themselves in a hole? Hide under a rock? Let up, give up, or quiet up? No. It says in Acts chapter 5, verse 42, that in daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. He said, you want me to stop talking about the name? I'm not going to cease. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up, let up, or quiet up. This is the only thing worth living for, giving my life for, and it works. It works. They kept on. The power of the church was found in their ability to continue. The power of the church was found in their ability to continue. Continue to preach. Continue to teach. Continue to pray. Continue to fast. Continue to minister. Continue to be sensitive. Continue to praise. Continue to worship. Their power was found in continuing in what they knew was right. Now, we've had a great revival services. We've had some great prayer. We've had some great times of praise and worship. We've had some excellent preaching. I enjoyed what I heard this morning. I felt so uplifted within my spirit. And we've had some great results. However, until Jesus comes to get us, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's keep beating our arrows on the ground. Let's keep walking. Let's keep wrestling. God has something great he wants to add and multiply within our lives. If we would just continue, there is a power in continuing. I'm asking that everyone would stand in this place. If you believe that God has something greater in store for you, your personal life, your ministry, your walk with him and this church, that he has something greater in store, then I invite you to come to this altar. I invite you to come and begin to praise him. Begin to lift up your hands and begin to tell God that you're committed to continuing until he comes. I'm going to overcome. I'm going to endure. I'm going to have an effect in my life, Lord Jesus, because I continue the very things that you taught me. I'm going to continue in what this word says because it gives me life and life more abundantly. I'm going to continue in these principles. I'm going to continue in these truths. I'm going to continue coming to church even when it's hard. I'm going to continue paying my tithe even though I know I could hold some back. I'm going to continue given of myself and teaching and preaching and ministering because I know someday and it might be soon that you're going to have an effect on their lives and you're going to make a difference Lord Jesus I know that you're going to make a difference in my life if I honor your word if I keep on keeping gone and I love you Jesus for it Lord God we come before you today
We come before you in expectation, knowing that you have something for us. We're thankful, Lord Jesus. And don't get us wrong, we're completely appreciative for the many souls that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost and those who have been baptized in the waters of baptism in your wonderful name. But Lord Jesus, we come today with an expectancy. An expectancy in our hearts. An expectancy in our spirits. And a, Lord, a commitment within us to say, I'm going to continue. When I leave this service, I'm going to wake up in the morning and pray again. When I have another time where I can pray and fast, I'm going to choose a day and do it. When I have an opportunity to talk to that person about you, Lord Jesus, I'll do it. I'll keep on. I'll keep on. I'll keep on. Because I know most assuredly, I know that you're going to bring it into the effect. I know that it's going to happen. That you're going to add. That you're going to multiply. That you're going to make it happen, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. I believe in you, Lord God. Begin to ask him for some vision. Begin him to ask you to direct your footsteps. Maybe there's someone specific he wants you to begin to minister to. Maybe there's somebody you need to continue to pray for because they're in some despair and they're in some desperation. And you feel, Lord, I prayed my last prayer. Pray again. Pray again. God hasn't stopped working on them yet. Don't give up. Don't give up. We can ask that he gives you that insight, that he gives you that direction, that he gives you that understanding that you need to keep on and move to the next step. 